Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about uh, some of the things I get in my uh, inbox and the questions that come in from customers. This is number two in our series. You can check out the first one, uh, Acoustic Fields Mailbox number two. Here are some of the questions that we get. We're just going to kind of go over them and walk you through them and maybe you have the same questions and hopefully some of these answers will assist you. I have numerous bass traps but I still have boom. Well, we, we know from past videos there's no such thing as a bass trap. It's a low frequency absorbing device. Some of the energy gets absorbed, some of it does not. So trapping, I don't know if that's really a good word. It's kind of like proofing and soundproofing. There really is no such thing as soundproofing. You never eliminate, you just manage. Same with low frequency technology. No elimination, just management. So they have numerous uh, bass traps, but they still have boom. Well, there's a couple issues here. One. You could have the wrong type of low frequency absorption technology. Remember, there's three types. There's Helmholtz, and there's diaphragmatic, which is the one we, we use. And then there's membrane. Membrane is kind of a cousin of diaphragmatic. Um, these two are very much related. This is a little bit different, more uh, narrow uh, frequency focus, a lot di more difficult to build. Uh, and a lot more difficult to uh, treat with. So diaphragmatic and membrane are your other two. So you want to make sure that you're using the proper technology. Now, a lot of the products out there are lint mass. You know, they're, they're a piece of cloth. Uh, they're building insulation in a box. Uh, you have to be really careful because those technologies are middle and high frequency. They're not really for low end uh, situations. Excuse me. So you got to have the right technology for the low frequency uh, unit. If you have numerous base traps, you might have them in the wrong location. Remember, a low frequency energy uh, absorbing device, first off, must be placed closest to the energy source because these are your areas of highest pressure in the room. So your first situation, your first area of placement is definitely around the speaker. So you want to uh, keep that in mind. So that's a, a good way to go there. All right, so that, that'll help you a little bit figuring that out. If you put traps in the corner and you still have the boom, well, I go through this every day with people. Let's explain it now so you can... Why do you think they talk about putting base traps in the corners? Well, the rationale is that this is the area of highest pressure, the corners, because it's a formed by three planes, the ceiling, the two side walls, and the floor. So... Actually, four. Well, three. But, but um, so the assumption is that the corners are always the areas of highest pressure. Well, nothing could be further from a truth. We have a database now of 121 built rooms and measured. And of those 120 built rooms, only 16% of the cases, the highest frequency is in the corner of the room. It's all dependent on size and volume. You can't make a general statement saying always in the corner. Another reason uh, acoustic product manufacturers use the corners is because you don't have anything in the corners. It's easy to sell you something to put in a place that you don't have something in already. But that's not a reason to buy something. That's like spending money to save money. Got to be careful with these things. Got to think through what you're doing. So it's not universally true that the highest pressure areas are in the corners of rooms. It's not, okay? And our database proves that and shows that. It's really dependent on the size and the frequency and also the size of your drivers, the amount of energy you have in the room, et cetera, et cetera. So be, you got to think through this stuff a little bit. All right, we have a room size that's 27 wide, 14 high, perfect. 14 foot, love it, love it. Great dimension for a drum room. 40 foot long, this is a big room. So RT60 times reverberation times are an issue. So it's going to take a lot of surface area. You have to cover a lot of surface area with the, the right amount of, of material. You have to do it in the right places. And you want to use a sound absorbing product that absorbs energy on both sides so you can minimize the amount of space that you require. Here's the problem. Look at the budget. So you have to be really realistic about the size and volume of the room and the amount of money that you have to spend. This, this won't even get you close. Probably you're closer to five or 6,000 just with foam. So be realistic in your budget and weigh it against your room size and usage. What are you trying to do in there? If you're making money in there, 
you're making a living in there, you obviously want to spend a little more money and get it right. So we have a long wall, short wall speaker position. Get this a lot. People say, well, do I put my speakers here along the long wall or do I put them here along the short wall? Depends on a couple factors. One, what's the radiation pattern of the speakers? What's the width of the room? What's this distance here? Because the radiation is going to fire this way if we put them long ways. Does it have an impact on low frequency? Absolutely. Because shorter dimensions, you know, can increase pressure. So we have to be really careful there. So horns are great on the long wall. And some dynamic drivers work good too. This is a little bit the, the orientation that most people use. And the reason they use that is because it's real easy and predictable to get good results that way. This takes a little more effort. So it depends on the radiation pattern of the speaker. It depends on the room size and volume. It depends on the uh, number of drivers that you have in their diameter. And it's not really up to you. It's, it's more up to the room. If your chief focus is good quality sound, you let the room tell you where to place your speakers, okay? If I can't get width, should I get length? Absolutely. The biggest factor in managing low frequency energy is room volume. What's room volume? Length times width times height. So any of these dimensions that we can increase gives us more volume, which helps us manage low frequency energy. So we'll do uh, these mailboxes uh, as we go through time. You know, this might even be number three, but anyway. <laughs> so there you go, and uh, hopefully, hopefully those uh, helped you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our videos today, and if you did, we really would appreciate a thumbs up from you. If you have any questions or comments, you can go to the comment section, or you can go to our website, AcousticFields.com, and fill out the contact form. Subscribe to our channel, our YouTube channel. We're now doing two videos a week. If you have some ideas for topics, you can uh, submit those to us also. If you're having room issues, we have that free room analysis. You can click on the button below and we'll compare your room to our database of 120 built rooms that uh, we built and actually measured, and I guarantee you your room is in that database. So just click on the button below for the free room analysis. Thank you.